Hi everyone, welcome back to The Nature Patch. My name is Robin and thank you for joining in on another video. The whippersnappering that has been going on around our house <laughs> in everyone's yard has finally ceased. So I can actually turn the camera on and start talking to you and film a video. This afternoon I'm out here with my gorgeous cup of peppermint tea and I've got a few things that I want to get done in the garden this afternoon. Mainly I have a few pawpaw slash papaya trees that I actually want to plant up against that wall there. So it's going to be a mishmash of gardening slash also answering a few questions that I have received over on Instagram and on YouTube to kind of catch you up on all of the different things going around on here um, and also just to connect with you a little bit more um, and so you can get to know me a little bit better. I personally love to know the creator behind the camera um, when I'm watching different videos so I thought this was a neat little way um, just to answer a few different random questions uh, while sipping on a cup of tea and uh, doing some gardening which kind of brings me to the first um, question that I got in one of my previous videos about the weed tea that I made so I've let this one sit for actually about a week and a half now which is generally a little bit longer we've got lots of lorikeets around us joining us this afternoon so Bear with me on the bird noise. <laughs> um, a week and a half is usually a little bit longer than I would usually let um, this kind of tea fertilizer sit for, but it is definitely ready to use now. So I'm going to put some of this into a watering can um, and then get watering the garden. Right, so as you just saw, I strained the wheat tea into this blue bucket here. Basically what this is, is a nitrogen rich fertilizer. You can make this from a lot of different things. I usually like to make it from the different weeds that I have around the garden. So all of these here um, were just weeds that I had pulled out of the garden and they had rotted down in this water, basically leached all of the nitrogen and the different nutrients that was in the, the leaves of the weeds. And then that is contained in this kind of water-based fertilizer. I usually dilute this about um, 10 to one so 10 parts water one part fertilizer and today I'm going to be using a lot of it on the beans behind me which really like a good nitrogen feed when they're a little bit younger like these ones are here I also really like to make this with food scraps um, banana peels are a really great option for making some free fertilizer you can make it with any other types of different veggie scraps the only thing I would recommend um, if you are making some kind of tea like this is to just be aware of any seeds that you might be adding to it um, so for the weeds here I specifically just stuck to the green leafy material rather than adding the different seed heads uh, into this mix just because that's one way to spread the weeds around the garden and that also goes for any kind of veggie scraps that you use as well or fruit peels or anything like that pretty much any plant in my garden likes a feed from this fertilizer so I'm not too picky on what I put on the plants today I'm probably just going to add it onto these beans and maybe the garlic behind me as well which I'll also give you a short update on. Kind of need to turn the tap on first. So I'm sitting very close to an awesome garden win and a uh, garden fail. <laughs> I'm always gonna share the different garden fails that I have with you. Um, gardening is not all winning. It's often majority failing. Um, so I had all of these seedlings of different winter greens that I wanted to plant out. And I had them out here because I wanted to kind of basically harden them off um, to be able to deal with the midday sun and also the cooler nights that we're starting to get. And this is kind of what I've ended up with is uh, really really well filed down kale from different cabbage moth butterfly and different caterpillars it's definitely not ideal but thankfully the win that i am having is that my elephant garlic has finally popped up it was quite a long wait for it to actually come up um, and i did have some different fungus also popping up which is actually called dog's vomit fungus or dog's vomit fungi whatever you want to call it so that's kind of showing that um, that the soil is building in this environment but i thought it may have affected the elephant garlic 
um, but I can see five that have popped up which is super exciting to see and all of the Glen Large garlic behind me here is also doing really really well so I'm actually going to start on a feeding regime for the Glen Large garlic and to do that I don't actually have it with me here um, but I did get gifted recently um, basically a garden planning book by Deb's flowchart over on Etsy she has some really really amazing different PDFs over on her shop and does some of the most beautiful different artworks the garden planner looks really really great and I'm really excited to use it to really just start documenting a little bit better what I'm doing in the garden particularly fertilizing because I want to have a really strict fertilizing regime for things like my garlic which is definitely an investment um, putting into the ground so I want a really good plan for it also to kind of keep my um, journaling going it's going to be really handy so I'm really excited to continue using it so thank you so much Debbie for sending me that All right I've got some questions on my phone and my cup of tea so so one of the questions was if you could live anywhere no restrictions about money or family where would you live I really like this question because it's something I dream about pretty much on the daily. I feel like a lot of homesteading people slash gardeners dream of their dream property. We're nowhere near in the position to buy our dream property at the moment, but we're making steps forward to basically becoming debt free and being able to purchase a large piece of land. In the last few years, I have had my eye on Tasmania. I absolutely love Tasmania. I just can't imagine myself living overseas anywhere. And throughout the past few years, um, after visiting a few times, I have absolutely fallen in love with Tasmania, which is the southernmost state in Australia. Um, and I have been yearning for a place that has different seasons and a cooler climate. While I love the subtropics and everything that we can grow here, I have always wanted to live in a cooler environment. I've lived a lot of my life in um, northern Australia and northern parts. So I've experienced a lot of the tropical kind of weather, lots of warm weather, um, and I'm really, really excited to be able to get back to the cold, which cold in Australian terms is very different to overseas but it has such a magical environment down there the different temperate forests down there just um, really connected with me on a spiritual level and I also just love the different animals down there and the walks I'm a big big bushwalker I love being in nature and um, yeah so a big property down there that we can restore rehabilitate um, and grow lots of food and build a community would be absolutely amazing and my dream that we're definitely working towards. <laughs> Another question was as a kid what did you want to be when you grew up? Which I'm having to actually think quite hard about because I can't quite fully remember but as a kid I was always interested in the outdoors and I was always interested in geography and earth science, even back in primary school. I still remember in primary school being the leader of all of the different worm farms at school and always being involved in gardening, um, permaculture, I suppose. So I always kind of wanted to be an environmental scientist slash environmental manager, um, educator, which is basically what I'm doing right now. So I'm almost finished my PhD research project. So, so on the way to having that doctor title in front of my name, not a medical doctor, but doctor of the philosophy of environmental science, I suppose. Um, and my passion is sharing knowledge about nature, about connecting to nature, what it can do for our mental and physical health, and really bridging that gap between people and nature that so many people crave that connection. So a lot of my work has been revolved around that um, and the impact that taking out uh, natural areas such as on mining sites has on people which it has a big impact. So understanding not only how it impacts biodiversity but how people use the land and if we can return that post mining has just been such an interesting question that I have pondered about for so long and hence ended up doing a PhD on it. My parents are both geographers as well, uh, so I kind of grew up in that sphere of nature and learning about nature. And um, yep, it's kind of all I've ever wanted to do and, uh, and what my passion is. 
Right, so I'm coming to you from the future of all of the other clips to this video. I wanted to add in here um, some of the questions and answers that I got on YouTube. The first question I got over there was what my favorite gardening books are. And that's a kind of tricky question because I don't actually read a lot of gardening books. I'm a very visual learner, so I really love watching videos um, and YouTube videos to learn different things. So YouTube is usually where I learn things about the garden and um, permaculture. So I don't actually have a lot of gardening books. The ones that I do use are generally field guides or animal guides to understand the animals in my area. So I have a few different kind of animal ID books that I use and plant ID books. Um, and I also really like reading a lot of novels that are related to gardening and people's experiences with permaculture and nature connections. Um, but in terms of actual kind of practical gardening books, I don't actually read a lot, which I would love to. So if you do have any recommendations, um, definitely let me know and I will slowly expand my um, gardening book collection. Another question I got was, what are you planning on doing with your qualifications? more research and the person who asked this Luke is a second year bioscience student so with my PhD I'll be finishing up pretty soon hopefully fingers crossed and I would like to finish up kind of mid-year and start to publish a lot of the chapters that I've written in what is going to be basically a book of research and science following on from that I have kind of secured some work to do a postdoctorate which is kind of the step after um, once you finish your PhD is to just continue doing research as a research fellow. So I'm kind of in the process of securing that, which will basically mean that I continue a lot of the work that I'm doing now, except I run a lot of the projects. So I'll be running a group of people doing field work, um, doing plant analysis and plant surveys up at Cape York. Also working on some really big indigenous protected area management projects. So I have a lot of things lined up that continue on with the work that I'm doing now. In the, and in the future, I would just always like to be involved with the people that I'm working with up at Cape York and Arnhem Land as well. Lots of different communities in the Northern Territory too. And participate in a lot of different big discussions that are happening in terms of developing Northern Australia, uh, working alongside Indigenous communities. There's definitely a lot to do in that sphere of work. Um, doing environmental management and working with indigenous people which is just my passion and yeah i just love the bunch of people i'm working with so hoping to continue doing that and diane and samson also asked a few questions the first question is uh, what's some advice that you'd give to those scared to take the first step in starting a garden which is an awesome question i like to always say to a lot of my friends go into your pantry and go into your fridge and have a look at the things that you're currently eating and see what you can grow uh, in your climate and at the time of when you want to start growing things and see if you can substitute anything either taking one or two things from the fridge or pantry that you can grow yourself makes such a big difference the first kind of advice that i'd give is to grow what you already eat there's really no use or i mean there is a lot of use because it's fun um, growing things that you're that you have never eaten before or that you're a little unsure of but things like herbs and uh, like things like snow peas and beans beetroot um, some of those kind of more basic vegetables that are generally a staple I definitely recommend starting with those and herbs is a great one the other advice I would give is just start just just plant something put something in the ground and observe how it grows from a seed to an actual plant because there's so many stages in a plant's life. I'm still learning every single day about how to care for plants. Um, so taking it slow is definitely some good advice. Another question was, what do you want to expand on or learn next with your own garden? Something that I want to learn is how to grow more food on a larger scale using permaculture principles. It's not really something I can do here, unfortunately, because we don't own this land, but the next place we live or the place after that, I want to be growing more food and I have never grown food on a large scale before. So um, that's something I would literally like to expand on and be able to produce enough food to, to actually be self-sustaining would be amazing but also to give back to the community um, and friends and start just being able to have someone come over and offer them a pumpkin or some greens or some beetroot 
um, that is definitely my goal. <laughs> I'd also really like to keep learning a lot of the native plants around this area and wherever we live, just because I think there's so many awesome Australian natives that we can use in the garden and help out in using permaculture principles. Um, so I would like to keep learning about all of the wonderful, beautiful plants that are around in Southeast Queensland. And the last question was, what inspired you to share your garden with a wider audience? And there's kind of two different answers to that. The first one is that I really needed some creative outlet in my life. I often have a lot of buzzing energy in my brain that I need to put into a project or put into something that I can produce and, you know, have a start to finish. It's just how my brain works, I suppose. I've always been like that. So I've always loved taking photos and doing videography. That's probably one of the reasons to keep me sane um, alongside all of my other work that I do. But the other one was just because I didn't see anyone doing it from Southeast Queensland, really. There are a few people, um, but not a lot of people that were around my age that I felt connected to. And a lot of my friends were starting to kind of get a little bit interested in gardening but didn't really know where to start. So I was getting a lot of Instagram messages from just like even random people at school that I used to know how to grow certain things. And um, yeah, I thought starting a YouTube channel and just filming what I do would be a great way to share knowledge. And that's just what I want this channel to be all about is sharing knowledge, sharing knowledge about how to grow food and connect to nature. And I think the more knowledge that's out there from different parts of Australia and different parts of the world, the better. What works on the other side of Australia definitely isn't gonna work here. And that goes the same for all around the world. So I think if we can have a lot more little pockets of information everywhere from everyone who does all of the different styles of gardening, um, we can always just take one or two things. And I hope that um, you can all take one or two things from my videos. Um, and apply in your garden to grow food and connect to nature as well. So that was my little ramble of uh, the questions from YouTube. So we'll go back to the past now and uh, finish all of the other questions. But thank you so much for sending in all of the questions on YouTube as well. All right, so I'll answer one more and then get back into the garden, do some more gardening. Is it difficult to find a good job in something related to biology in your country? What's your opinion? That is a very good question. My first response is that no, I don't think it would be difficult to find something related to biology. Um, and that goes for any stage of a biologist, whether you are a qualified biologist or whether you have an interest in conservation, plants, animals. Biology is all about kind of the living side of things um, and physical things that are on the planet, such as the plants and the animals. And we're really lucky in Australia because we have a lot of plants and animals. <laughs> Thankfully, a lot of different funding goes into different land care organizations, um, different research projects. I know at the university that I'm at, we have such a big group of people working in conservation and biology, and we're always looking for more people to join and do different animal surveys and plant surveys. I don't think it would be too hard. Uh, there's always a few different um, certificates that you can do in land care and land management that are pretty easy to do that you don't need any qualifications for in Australia if you are interested in biology. So there's definitely quite a few steps that you can do to get a job over here. I know there's also a lot of different programs uh, both volunteer and paid work for overseas students to come over to Australia and do different conservation work. All right, I need to plant some pawpaws in the ground and actually do something in the garden, but um, it's so lovely this afternoon. Right, so I've done four holes for the four pawpaws. These were just given to me for free, so, so hopefully the variety is okay. Um, but my hope is that these will grow up to give a little bit of afternoon shade uh, for summer for this veggie patch um, and just kind of, yeah, grow up straight along all of this row here.
right, so that is all of those planted. I also have um, the compost bin still here. That is my in-ground fertilizer, I suppose. Uh, and the compost in there is almost done. So when that is done, I'm basically just gonna be lifting it off and then spreading the compost out all in this bed here. So that's what I'm going to use to um, provide a lot of organic matter and mulch for these pawpaw trees. Hopefully they will like that little addition. But yeah, this uh, side of the garden is definitely filling up. This is turning into a long kind of garden tour slash ramble. But one of the other things I did plant was quite a lot of basil in this area that I'll show you. So I really wanted a lot more basil. Um, pesto pasta is probably one of my favorite dishes ever. Um, so I just planted um, a nice little clump here just to use up kind of the square meter gaps I suppose that I have in the garden. Um, I don't want any space in this garden. I want to be growing as much food as I can at all of the different levels that I always like to talk about. So this is going to be a nice little ground cover here that I've just mulched with a little bit of pigeon pea. Um, so yeah, hopefully this basil does okay. I will probably feed it some of the weed tea as well just to get it kick-started. Back where we started for the end of the video. And I hope you don't mind that this is a little different to some of my other videos. Like I've said in previous ones, it is really hard for me to sit down and film and edit and do all the things that are associated with making videos, but it's something that I love. And connecting with actual people online about gardening that enjoy watching this content just brings me so much joy. So, you know, my channel is definitely a mixed bag of content, but, um, but yeah, thank you for rolling with that. <laughs> um, oh, they're having the biggest bonfire over there and it looks so fun. Might have to set up a little fire pit around here soon. So the last question that I'll answer is what are some of your life dreams slash goals that you have? When I talk about goals and dreams, I always just think of Jess from Roots and Refuge who really inspired me to think about my goals and my dreams whenever I watch a lot of their videos. Her videos just make me so happy and inspire me so much. And one of my goals is to do that for other people and to help inspire people to connect to their surroundings, connect to their natural environment, and also to use gardening as a tool to do that as well and using nature as a tool to garden. Inspiring people to do that and to grow their own food is one of my main goals in life. I've recently been going through a lot of transitions of what I do want in my life, what I actually value, my different beliefs and things like that. Um, and a lot of those don't really revolve around material possessions, money and things. They really revolve around people and community and building that and building friendships, which is something that I am kind of lacking in my life at the moment and would really like to work on that. And so my goal, like Jess on Roots and Refuge Farm, um, is actually to have some kind of centre or a um, open garden where people can come and learn. I would love to have a property one day where people can either come and camp to or stay there or we can host different events all about things such as permaculture and connecting to nature and really just the basics of that connection between people and our environment. So having some kind of public space where, where we can share and um, you know provide that inspiration is one of my life goals <laughs> and YouTube right now is kind of the pathway for me to be able to start that journey and start inspiring people but also just to learn from others. I don't want the space where we have eventually to just be a space where we inspire. I want it to be a space where we can learn and where everyone else can learn um, about growing food and about nature and just how special it is. So it's big goals and it'll take a long time but I know it will eventually happen where we can have a beautiful property um, to do all of this. One day it'll happen but for now I am a PhD researcher doing my research um, which I would also like to continue throughout my lifetime as well um, and each and every day yeah trying to get a little bit closer to that goal that we have. Something I would absolutely love to know if you have made it this far is what your goals are um, in terms of gardening and homesteading just because that is kind of the theme of my channel and I would love to know where you want to take uh, your passion for gardening and homesteading whether it's just providing more food for your family and friends or whether you want to start a YouTube channel and share it with hundreds of random people online. <laughs> 
who are all absolutely lovely, I would like to say. Yeah, let me know down in the comment section down below. What an afternoon, what a video, lots going on around me. The birds have kept me company, that's for sure. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for sending in some of the questions. It was really fun answering them. And if you do have any more questions, just leave them in the comment section below. I would love to do another video like this as well for um, us to all kind of get to know each other a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching and until my next video, happy gardening everyone. Bye.